Yeah, g'day YouTubers, uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about basic hand filing. Uh, for those there that have maybe just got a chainsaw and not too familiar. So I don't want to get into too many technical terms. Maybe getting towards the end of the video I might. But in the beginning I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So let's say that you've gone out and got yourself a chainsaw. And you've got most likely a 3.8 low profile or a standard 3.8 of course there's other sizes you have 0.325 and for your larger saws your 404 anyway you're decided that you're going to file them yourself which is usually the way most beginners start off they get a chainsaw they go out and get a file and they start filing them now your chainsaw manual won't go into any detail about how to sharpen it up some people take the chains down to the local shop and get them sharp for about ten dollars uh, or you can attempt to do it yourself so hopefully the information that i give you will put you on the right track now probably one of the easiest ways to file a chainsaw is that you mount the chainsaw in a vise if you don't have a vise uh, you, you can actually put it on a table you can get a chain vise uh, stump vise they call it and it's just a little bit of a uh, clamp and it's got little points on the bottom and it goes into a bit of bottom of wood but you could always rig something up you could always achieve the same sort of thing with a small type of G clamp uh, you just got to stop it from skating around uh, on the bottom that's all but either way you need to be able to keep your chainsaw fixed into something you don't want it uh, jumping around while you're filing there's nothing worse than uh, than everything moving that's why I made this particular clamping system here and if you just zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that it's all made out of stainless steel and it's got three bolts up the top. So I can either bolt, I like to have it bolted. Everything's fairly tight. Uh, I can loosen these off and have it loose. So it depends uh, which way I want to do it. So we'll assume that you've got a 3.8 chain, whether it's low profile, uh, normally... Uh, by the time you get to about a 50cc saw, you've got 3.8 standard chain. So generally anything below 50cc will have 3.8 low profile on it. That's fairly generic. 3.8 chain is the most common chain worldwide. So uh, yeah, you've got 0.325, which they use them on a lot of the pro saws. And you've got quarter inch chain, which is even you know, for real small saws. Uh, and your 404, which is for your very large saws, you know, uh, 80 cc's and above. Okay, now, the thing that you have to file is the main primary angle. There are two angles that you'll only ever really need to worry about. The primary angle is the top plate angle. That's the one that you need to worry about. And that one there is this angle on top here when we view the top of the tooth. That is set at 30 degrees 99 percent of chains that you will use will be set at 30 degrees that why because they've tried all other angles and this is the most durable this is a full chisel chain it's got a very sharp point on it a little bit different than the semi chisel so what we refer to as the primary angle is this one here as i said top plate angle 30 degrees Secondary angle is the angle that the file uh, will leave, which is roughly 60 degrees, or if we're using a uh, grinder, we can set that at 60 degrees, or it's set at 60 degrees on the cheaper ones. So how do we get a 60 degree angle using a file that's round? Well, quite simply, if your file sits 20 degrees above, oh, sorry, 20% uh, percent above the tooth, uh, you will find out that that 60 degree angle will be made, provided you do that. If your file is too low, you'll start filing down the bottom here. You can see I've just touched that. If we zoomed in, if we zoom in there, you can see that I've just touched that with a file. Look, that, that happens. That's uh, nothing to really worry about. So therefore, the other thing comes into mind. If 3.8 low profile and 3.8 standard are the two most common sizes out there, what file sizes uh, do we use for each? Well, for your standard 3.8 low profile, we use a 4mm uh, file, which is a 532. And 
for a 3.8 standard chain, still recommend 5.2 millimeter. Some of the other manufacturers of other chains recommend uh, 5.5 millimeter. So 5.5 millimeter is uh, 732 file. So we're going to use a uh, a 5.2 millimeter file. The other thing that can be done is that when you've got a brand new chain, you'll notice that the height of the tooth varies. So when we look at a tooth like this and we put a straight edge on top, you'll notice that the tooth slopes backwards for clearance. So the tooth gets a little bit smaller as we get down here. So therefore, what some people do, they start off with a 732 file or a 5.5 millimeter file. When they get about halfway down, they'll switch over to a 5.2 millimeter file. That's entirely up to you. I'm only saying what a lot of people do, uh, but still recommend a 5.2 millimeter file for a th standard 3.8 chain and a 4 millimeter file for a 3.8 low profile chain. If you're not sure what chain you got, maybe somebody gave you a chainsaw, you were inherited a chainsaw or whatever, take it down to your local shop, just say to the guy, look, I needed some files, and you'll probably want a depth gauge as well. Now, we'll get into depth gauges after this, but what we'll do now is proceed to file this. So we've talked about the uh, primary angle, which is 30 degrees, and the secondary angle, which is 60 degrees. So for this tutorial, what we're going to do is just file. Now, there's two positions that you can file. You can keep your file like this and stand behind your file. I prefer not to stand behind any file. I prefer to stand to the about oh, 300 mil, a foot away. So I'll stand behind here and I'll reach forwards so that I've got a really good clear view. Now, on a semi-chisel chain, you will hold your file as horizontal as possible. That's the filing position. No 10, would, 10 degrees downward tilt. That's on full chisel. We'll get to that in a minute. And you've got your 30 degrees. So you must keep that 30 degrees. On just about every uh, chain that you buy, you'll see a little etched mark at the back of the tooth. That generally is your witness mark, but it also shows you the degrees roughly of what the tooth is angled at the primary angle so place it horizontal and keep it as good within the 30 degrees as possible and proceed i have my thumb and my forefinger in my left hand and in my right hand i have the handle and it's just a gradual forward motion then i swap hands over to the next one same thing swap again now a lot of people don't swap hands what they do, they file the left tooth and then they'll file the right tooth. One of the reasons I like to file this way is that I get in the groove and that means that I get a rhythm and I'll be filing the same amount of pressure on the right hand as well as the left hand. Oh, I slipped then. That happens sometimes. You can uh, just slip. So... Once you get in the groove, you'll be pretty well right. You'll be filing pretty good. Practice makes perfect. Now, I'm going a little bit fast, so maybe I could slow down a little bit so that you... When you hold the file here, you need to make sure that it's 20% above. So you're going to ask me, how do I know I'm 20% above? It's a bit of a guessing game. So you've got to make sure... And you're probably pretty close that if there's a little bit of a gap, if you can look down and see a little bit of a gap, you need to lift your file up and pull it in. So go forwards and pull it in and lift it up. You'll actually see if there's any gap there, you'll, the file as it removes metal will close that gap. So you'll know that you're, you're doing it correctly. And it's the same thing when you swap over. Just look at the gap. And if you, if you still see a gap, Lift your file up and pull it in a bit. You may have to do a six or seven strokes. 
So that's what you need to do as you remove metal. A lot of people make a lot of mistakes and they wonder why their teeth uh, are not sharp. So we'll just go over that one more time and then we'll move on. File up against the tooth. We look down here to see whether we see a gap. If you can't see a gap and it looks pretty good, apply the pressure this way and slightly up. Now, you just saw me probably lift the file off. The last thing you don't want to be doing is dragging that file backwards with pressure on it. So, you can file like that and just pull back. As I'm pulling back, I'm not putting any pressure on, so you, it's, it's, it's quite okay to do it that way as well. I just like to lift it off. I just feel that, yeah, you get used to, you get whichever way you develop, whatever your technique is, the main thing, I'm not going to criticise anyone's technique because if your technique works for you, that's all that matters, as long as you can get the job done and get it done properly. So... Now, let's just say that you filed the entire chain. You need to have a visual inspection of this chain. Make sure that these edges, the top plate and the side plate, that everything's all razor sharp. You feel it, look at it, take it off. So what we would do is take this off and have a visual inspection. And that would be just a matter of looking at our teeth. So that's what you need to do. Look at it from this side. Look at it from that angle. And then if you say, oh, this one, this one doesn't look very good, you might decide to give it, put it back on. So, and you might give it an extra two strokes of tooth if you want to. It's up to you how you do it. it depends on the technique that you develop and how good your technique is. So usually over time you get better at it. The next thing that is equally important is if you've got razor sharp teeth but your depth gauges are incorrectly set, you won't be cutting. Or if you're cutting, you won't be cutting very good. So you need yourself a depth gauge. You'll see a lot of depth gauges like this. Very, very old style. This type of depth gauge was invented by a man, and you've probably all heard of Oregon Chain, Joseph Cox, so 1953, he invented it and patented the, the uh, gauge, depth gauge, and it had a depth uh, at one end of 25 thou and 30, so in this case it's 0.065 millimetre, which is close to 20 thou. The whole idea is that you place this on top. If the depth gauge protrudes out, you just file straight over the top. So, yeah, that's what you would uh, do with this type of gauge. The only problem with this type of gauge is that once you get down to about halfway down, you really need to be starting to take about 0.9 of a millimetre off, you know, around, around 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And then by the time you get to the end of the life, you'd be taking about 1.4 millimetres off. This type of gauge will not allow you to do that because it's referred to as a constant depth gauge. And what that will mean is that it will only ever take 0.65 of a millimetre off. Now remember, as I said, this was invented in 1953. If we're to go about another 12, 13 years into the future, there was a man that uh, called Ray Carlton that had, uh, and they still sell Carlton uh, chains today. He invented a depth gauge called the Philo Plate, which is still available today. It's a little bit similar to this one. This is Still's version. This has only been out since 2017 uh, because a lot of the arborist groups in America put pressure on Still. Why don't you have a progressive depth gauge? So what is a progressive depth gauge compared to a constant depth gauge? A progressive depth gauge starts off at 0.65 millimetres from a brand new chain, but as you file the tooth down, it'll get that 0.65 will increase 
to 1.4 millimeters by the time you get to the end of the life of the chain. Now, how does that do that? Well, quite simply, I've measured from the start of the tooth, say, to the bottom uh, of the uh, tooth, uh, or, or it's called the uh, heel. So, and I measured from a brand new uh, tooth to one that was come to the end of the life, and I found an average depth of about 1.4 millimetres from, from brand new to end of life. So just so we're all both on the same page here. From brand new, I would measure from this point to the bottom, and I would measure from the witness mark from here to the bottom, the same thing. And I found a difference of 1.4 millimetre. Roughly about halfway, around about 0.9 millimetre, give or take. Most of this uh, top plate sloping angle is about 10 degrees. So based on, I'm basing that on a 10 degree slope. Some chain manufacturers may have a slightly different slope, uh, but most of them probably pretty much the same because everything's been tried and proven over many, many years. So back to our progressive depth gauge. Our progressive depth gauge has two settings, a hard and soft setting. Probably the difference is, you know, say, at brand new on hard setting will be, say, roughly 0.65 of a millimetre. And on a soft setting, it may be only 0.7 or maybe 0.75. I don't know exactly. I haven't measured it. Uh, it's, I didn't find it that relevant. Only So what happens with this gauge... Yes, the back of the gauge sits on the tooth like the other one, but the front of the gauge sits on the actual tie bar, uh, the tie straps. So if we sit that on the tie straps and the depth gauge will come into the window. And as we have a look there, you can see that it doesn't protrude. If it protrudes, you can run your file, your, your flat file, straight over the top. This has got a Rockwell hardness of 62 HRC so that's uh, that's the packet that it came out of and as you can see 62 HRC so we'll actually get a file and give you a little bit of demonstration so if you just wait one second there right back again sorry about that i had to go get a file okay so we'll use this gauge and it's just a matter of put it on top and filing put it on top took a little bit off that one a little bit off that one you can actually get good speed up on these I think you could probably hear hear that. So that took a little bit off also. That one didn't. Just make sure it's sitting down properly. That one's fine. Now, the other thing is, as I said, a file has a Rockwell hardness of about 60 and the plate is 62. So all you're going to ever do to this gauge is scratch it. And that's what's happened to it. It's been scratched. So that's our semi-chisel. So just to recap on it, semi-chisel chain has a rounded working corner. That rounded working corner is much better durability than a full chisel because if it hits a little bit of dirt, it's much more forgiving. It has a top plate angle of 30 degrees as your primary angle. Your secondary angle is 60 degrees. That is generated generally by a file. If the file is held 20% above the highest point of the tooth. And you try and keep the teeth as even as possible on both sides. Because if the teeth, if everything goes all haywire, you'll be cutting crooked. Also, if you've got too much slop in your bar and you've got an old chain, and the chain's leaning to one side while it's cutting, it can cut crooked as well. So you can have bar and chain issues, uh, and you'll see many people on the forums say, I'm cutting crooked. What normally eliminates that is that the depth gauges are matched to each individual tooth. 
So in other words, if this one's slightly shorter than that one, the tooth I'm talking about, so this tooth is slightly shorter than that one, means that the depth on this will need to be uh, lower than that one. So if you take your time and do all your depth gauges, you will hear uh, people say, people ask the question, how often do I need to do these depth gauges? Well, I've got five or six chainsaws. Yeah, I've got battery ones, pole saws, hand cutters, you name it. I've, I've got quite a lot. I can't remember, and I've got box, yeah, when I buy chain, I buy it in 100 uh, foot rolls, so I make up the loops myself, so yeah, I generally only keep about four or five uh, loops for each chainsaw, I can't remember when I checked the last one, so if I pick up a chainsaw and go to use it, and uh, and I've got to resharpen it, I can't remember when I checked the depth gauges last, so automatically, when I sharpen a chain, whether it's on a grinder or whether it's by file, out comes the depth gauge now if i'm running the depth gauge over them and i'm not filing anything off after the first five or six and i could pro probably be pretty safe that that's doesn't need any further maintenance so that's what i would normally do so let's uh briefly talk about the full chisel chain and then we can maybe wrap up so for those this is brand new piece of uh chain that I've got here I've just uh, taken this off a roll and we'll just try and show you the profile so look at that profile it's got a very very sharp little hook on it at 60 degrees and then it changes so this was this is the brand new one now I ground this this has been done on a grinder and that was done without 10 degrees downward tilt and the next tooth was done with 10 degrees downward tilt and if you say what's the difference you'll find out that the curvature this one has more curve in it or hook as, as what we refer to and this has less hook why do you want less hook if you have less hook the point will be much stronger the more hook you got the more pointy it is the more damage that can happen so this is where you use the 10 degrees downward tilt so if we were going to do this chain with a file and we we're going to do a 10 degrees downward tilt we are going to drop our file about 10 degrees as we file on all the left or the right so in this situation, if we were going to do this tooth, we would drop it down like that. What does that do? The 10 degrees downward tilt puts a compounded bevel on there. And we spoke before what a compounded bevel was. It's two angles on the same uh, tooth. But... It actually reduces it, if we're saying 30 degrees, full chisel chain, this is 25 degrees. It doesn't have to be as aggressive. And you'll notice that on full chisel, there's no radius. It comes to a nice square. So when, when you look at the tooth, it's square on the top and the side. There's no radius like this. This has a radius on it. And the working corner, as you, as you can see, is rounded whereas the working corner which is the point is very pointy so just remember if you do have a full chisel chain or you decide to, that you want to try one out just remember that when you do file it's exactly the same procedure as what you saw before except you drop it down 10 degrees and when you do the other side exactly the same drop it down 10 degrees how much is 10 degrees? That's see, see, that's the other thing. You've got to be capable of guessing. You don't want to be tipping your fire. So 10 degrees roughly is probably something like that. Just see whether you can. It's probably something like that. It's not that. So if that's horizontal and you just tip it a little bit, that's only a couple of degrees. So 10 degrees is more like that. You've got to guess it. Now, the last thing you want to be doing, you don't, when you do drop your file down, you don't want to be grinding or filing the tie strap. So then you know you've gone too far. 
Some chain manufacturers recommend the 10 degree downward tilt. Some don't. Still don't recommend it. They used to, but they don't no longer. So it's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Look, it's certainly not the biggest game changer. It's not like if you forget to do it, you're probably not even going to notice much. I can't notice much difference whether I do it or not. If you had two brand new chainsaws the same size and you had a... Uh, full chisel chain on each one one had 10 degrees tilt one didn't i couldn't tell you the difference between one yeah so it's up to you whether you want to do it or not look i hope that information helps out there for the newbies uh i don't want to get too much into the full chisel the only thing you may which i haven't told you you might say where do you use the full chisel as opposed to the semi chisel well, as I said before, the semi-chisel is your best all-rounder chain. It'll work in just about every situation that you want it to. The full chisel won't work in every situation. It's certainly no good in frozen timber. By frozen timber, I mean countries that have a lot of snow. Uh, you're better off with 25-degree angle, and you're also better off... Look, you're better off with uh, semi-chisel in that situation. But... I'm here in Australia, our summers can be 40 degrees, so on a hot day, uh, the timber is a little bit softer than if, if it's below zero. Also, the full chisel works really good on green timber. It'll just cut through knife, through uh, butter. So, semi-chisel works really good. It's much more aggressive. It's probably 15, cuts about 15% uh, quicker. So it's actually good that if you've got a large tree and it's fallen down and you want to cut through it fairly quick, it'll cut through most of that fairly quickly until you get right down the bottom near the stump and it might be a little bit more difficult. But And you might find out that you, if a semi-chisel chain lasts, say, for three hours, you might find out that a full chisel chain might only last for two hours before you've got to resharpen it. That's the difference. But if you're cutting much quicker using a full chisel, then you've got to balance time, yeah, you know, the amount of time that it that it takes to resharpen as opposed to the time that you may have saved. So, yeah, you know, for some people saving ten to fifteen percent may not be worth it. Anyway, that's up to you. There's always a lot of debates about this issue, uh, whether to use full chisel or semi chisel, what angles. But my best advice to you is stick with the manufacturer's recommendation. You can't go wrong because a lot of time and an effort, especially still, if you look at steel chain and you look at even Oregon, they're all using 30 degrees top plate angle. Yeah. The professionals, that's a different league altogether. I'm not talking about professionals. though. They can have their own custom uh, setup. Uh, for what they're doing they've got a lot of experience and that's the same as as anything any other thing that you get involved in stick with uh, standard settings until you know otherwise when you gain a lot of experience up your sleeve then you can play around with different angles and uh, it either works or it doesn't work and it depends on what timber but you can find information but generally speaking just to give you a little bit of a guideline if you were to have 35 degrees top plate angle, that is very, very aggressive on a full chisel, a very, very pointy, very, very easy to blunten the tip because it's so needle sharp. That is suitable like in pine timber. But if you had a hard eucalypt timber, it's not very suitable in that. You'd be better off with 25 degrees and you can get away with that. But your semi-chisel would probably be even more suitable in your harder timber because it would last longer uh, in its cutting time. So that's the only downside on the full chisel. It's very, very pointy. It's very, very aggressive. It cuts faster, but it dulls much quicker. So that's the trade-off. Anyway, it's up to you. Look, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for watching and bye for now.